What are the consequences of undereating? Well, there is a few. The first one is metabolic adaptation. If you're unaware of that term, what metabolic adaptation is, is your body's response to the amount of calories that you're consuming versus how many you're burning. And that can be positive and that can be negative. For example, if you are constantly in this context of the podcast, which is around under eating, if we're constantly under eating or we're in a calorie deficit for so long, our body is going to stop burning the amount of calories that it usually did because it's not receiving the same amount of calories. So if we get practical and start looking at numbers, if your maintenance calories is 2,500 and you're consuming 2,000 every day, you're going to have that calorie deficit of 500 calories and you're going to have that discrepancy there. But if you continue to stay at 2,000 calories, your body's not going to stay burning 2,500 calories every day. It's going to start slow down processes so that the amount of calories that you burn per day become a bit closer to what you're receiving because if we look at it from a historical point of view and an evolutionary perspective, if we were just to continue to burn calories that we didn't have and eat into our body fat, we would die or we would become very weak and fragile where a hungry grizzly bear would just come and lap us up and we would be their breakfast. So it's not in our best interest to continue to burn energy that we don't have. It does happen to a certain point, but then our body starts metabolically ad adapting to the amount of calories that we're consuming and it starts slowing it down. It starts preserving your energy. It starts slowing down how fast you move. And these influences happen to help you ultimately maintain your body weight because your body wants you to stay the weight that you are. Your body wants to sit at homeostasis. It doesn't want to lose body fat because that body fat is what we're surviving off. And now we, we live in an environment where we have an abundance of food around us. So starving to death, to death, wow. Starving to death for most people uh, is not a realistic uh, outcome of the day. I understand that in certain aspects of the world, uh, food is still very hard to come by. But for most of us, especially listening to this podcast, we probably won't starve to death. And we still need to 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 be aware of how many uh, calories we're consuming versus, versus how much we're burning. Because if we just continue to under eat, our body's going to stop giving us that energy and it's going to start slowing down things. So with metabolic adaptation, that's what leads to a fat loss plateau. If you uh, come back to that example, all right, you're eating 2,000 calories, but you're burning 2,500. That 2,500 is slowly going to come down. We're going to start, uh, start, start wanting to move less, potentially train a little bit less intensely. Uh, you might uh, use your hands a bit less. You might want to sit down more often. And most of this is subconscious, um, but it does happen. In really, really extreme examples, and I talked about this in the previous podcast, uh, some body building competitive athletes actually, because they were in such an extreme calorie deficit, metabolic adaptation was real. They were blinking slower. Like they were so lethargic uh, because their body was like, if I just keep blinking as fast as possible, that's energy that I'm wasting. So they were like, their body was that desperate to preserve energy. So metabolic adaptation can occur. Um, low energy availability can also happen. LEA. And that represents a state in which the body does not have enough energy left to support all physiological functions needed to maintain optimal health. So it's similar to the definition of under eating, but it kind of adds in, you're not getting enough nutrients, calories, micronutrients, all these things, energy to support your physiological functions to maintain optimal health. So low energy availability is kind of like your health is deteriorating and that's the seriousness of under eating the the mild the mild seriousness is 
okay, your energy is going to be impacted. But then the great consequence is your health is, is, is going to become a concern if you just continue to under eat. And, and, and real serious problems can happen. Um, and when you're in this state of low energy availability, uh, many things can happen. Uh, potentially, females can lose their period, which is, or their menstrual cycle, which is, you know, known as amenorrhea. Um, you have, uh, you can have decreased performance. Um, and that's just simply because you're consuming less fuel, right? Less, f- less gas in the gas tank. You're just going to get more tired. Your body's going to be like, well, why would I exert all this energy? Because I'm only getting 1200 calories a day. I can't train as if I'm eating 2500 calories today because I just don't have that energy. So it's not going to do that. Uh, Potential loss of muscle mass, uh, it is harder for protein synthesis to occur if you're not uh, consuming enough protein, but also not consuming enough overall calories. So that may uh, that may happen. Poor recovery, if you're not having, once again, enough uh, micronutrients, uh, enough, enough macronutrients, enough calories overall, it's going to be harder to recover. And then that kind of just keeps snowballing into, okay, so you can't recover enough. That means you can't train hard. Oh, sorry, you can't train as frequently. But then when you, if you're not training as frequently, when you are training, you have less performance because you have less energy. So then that's going to add into losing muscle mass. And then you're going to be more lethargic. You're going to have potential brain fog throughout the day. You can drink as much caffeine as you want, consume as many stimulants as you want, but low energy availability and constant under eating is going to catch you I tried to run away from it for ages and I ended up crashing and burning. I experienced some of the darkest thoughts and hardest times of my life when I was <laughs> under eating. And that that isn't the only thing that was happening, okay? I obviously had things going on in my life. I was changing careers. I had just broken up with the band that I was singing in and trying to organize what I was actually doing with my life. So that was a big concern of my life. So it was like very big and I was taking my life very seriously. I thought I was destined for greatness and I was like, what am I even doing with my life now that the band's broken up? Do I keep trying to sing? Do I become a fitness fitness guy, a personal trainer? Do I do a course? Do I move back to Christchurch? Because I just moved to Auckland and I I live in this shitty house and there's cockroaches everywhere and I'm like unhappy. So I had this big breakdown, right? But now that I come to think of it, this pivotal time of my life, I was also starving myself. This was when I was at the 1500 calorie mark. I was that guy. I was constantly under eating. I was obsessing over food. I was always hungry. I was training like I was eating one meal a day sometimes. I would not eat all day, train at like 3 or 4 p.m. and then eat after that. So I hadn't, like, it was just a rough time and I, and I, and I think under eating didn't help. And I think another consequence of under eating is lack of aggression. And that isn't like, hey man, you want to fight? Like, no, I'm under eating. I'm not aggressive. It's, it's, it's like determination. It's ticking off goals. It's making something of yourself having aggression if like or ambition could be another word or drive sometimes you meet people and you're like this person wants to go somewhere this person is fulfilled and i feel like when you're under eating you just don't have enough energy to do that and have that drive sometimes you can override it with just pure mental determination I think I sat in that category when I was first in that point. But as I just shared, I did break down at the end of that. And I feel like that's when it got to me. I just didn't have the energy to deal with things physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. It was just a bit of a weird time in my life. I I, I think that under eating didn't help. 